So, um, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Bjorn Jespersen of the University of Utrecht. Um, he's uh, working in, uh, in what well, we invited him for, uh, because we're interested in the topic of hyperintentionality, which has been discussed very often uh, in this seminar. Um, but they, he has a special approach to it, uh, mm -hmm. which is a very promising approach that is quite different from other non-classical logic approaches, uh, namely the Czech approach, one could say, uh, inspired by Tiki, mm -hmm. uh, Tiki, uh, Tiki. Uh, the, the transparent intentional uh, uh, semantics uh, logic. Uh, so I assume that your talk also will be uh, in that framework, uh, so it's great to have a real specialist of that specific approach uh, among us and uh, to enlighten us in that in view of philosophy of language and logic. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, the, the first half of this talk will be general philosophy of language. So I'll talk about a cluster of cases which have been used or abused to make a case for hyperintentionality. There is a case to be made for hyperintentionality, uh, but we have to uh, tweak those cases. And the, that's me being negative. But the positive bit is that I show by means of TIL what to do. TIL is all about transparent social logic. TIL is all about fine grading. But today I'll be making a case for course grading. There are limiting cases where we exactly do not want to find grain. Because if we find grain, we are find graining due to syntax and or pragmatics. But we shouldn't. We should find grain only due to semantics. And of course, presupposing a particular notion of semantics here. A rather narrow uh, notion of semantics. Think of Church, think of uh, Frege, I'll be quoting from Der Gedanke, and this is in the spirit of Der Gedanke. What, if you take a piece of language, what are all the things that do not contribute to the Gedanke? Go, 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 go. So you're left with the core, the logical core, and I'm on the same. Um, on the same, busy with the same, concerned with the same project today. Um, so the, yeah, it works. So just just to uh, bring up to speed, there is um, a lot of cases where you seem to be dealing with synonyms from natural language. We know synonymy in natural language is who knows, right? But we can always make a stipulation. If these two concepts, if these two predicates are synonymous, then something follows. I cannot tell you if any pair of concepts or predicates or what have you are actually synonymous relative to a particular language. Uh, I wouldn't know. That's for the field linguist to decide. I'm making a conditional statement. If if synonymous, then so so. Um, standard cases are woodchuck, groundhog, whistlepick, furs, gorse, uh, cougar, uh, puma. Right. The I'll be say unpleasant things about the majority view. I think it's, 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 uh, it's flawed. Uh, drawing, distinct, drawing distinctions that shouldn't be drawn. Right? So looking at syntactic distinctions and drawing semantic distinctions that shouldn't be drawn. So that's the majority view. I'll be defending what I call the minority view. And we all side with the, with the underdog, right? <laughs> Um, of course, this is common ground. I think we, we can all agree about this. F and G are uh, properties. So if, if F and G are the same property, then uh, this little agent here may not know that they are identical. Right. Uh, you, do, you know that every uh, property is self-identical. That doesn't entail that you know for each property that it is self-identical. Because you, that property may not within your repertoire, maybe outside your 
linguistic and epistemic horizon. This is trivial, as it should be. Uh, the majority view says we can have cases where F and G are the same property, and yet he believes, A believes, is an agent that somebody is an F, and the same agent fails to believe that the same agent has that property. To me, that's inconsistent. But it is taken almost as a datum in much analytic philosophy of language that if this is Gardner, this is Woodchuck, uh, then you can believe that uh, uh, Arnold is a uh, uh, Woodchuck and you fail to believe that the same animal is a whistleblower. And then lots of arguments are given. Uh, Typically, the turn on programmatics, it would be misleading to attribute a certain uh, view, a certain attitude, attitude, right? Not just a sense that you would you would agree to now. An attitude um, to B, where you use the predicate G at, at the expense of F. Um, or they would point to historical or causal uh, factors. You have interacted with the when you acquired the predicate if you were in historical and causal contact with things you, that were presented to you as Fs, but not as Gs. Therefore, you can have an attitude about Fs and the same attitude about Gs. Despite this conflict. To me, that's inconsistent. So, what I'm saying is it's a necessary condition for the identity of F and G that the attitude that B is an F is identical to the attitude that B is a G. If if we don't have identity of attitudes here, we do not have identity of uh, properties there. Which, of course, is a condition that this is a condition that flies in the face of the majority view. So let me find the rating found in the consequent. And I haven't said whether being, we be intentional or hyper-intentional yet, but any fine grain, any measure of calibration, any integration of intentions or other intentions that we find here <coughs> will be carried through to the antecedent. So this imposes a condition on the integration of properties. But the way I identify, I did in I should have a small question of clarification. You say that it's inconsistent. Uh, uh, say that something is inconsistent, but what, what is it is inconsistent to believe or the statement itself? It's attribution, attribution that it, it's, okay. it's, it, it's an inconsistent attribution. Okay, not just the constant inconsistent belief, but also the attribution is inconsistent. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you. And, and, it, and it becomes important to distinguish between the attitude attributed and the attribution. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we have an attributor and an attribute team. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, So any, any fine grading over here, um, the level of attitude is carried through to the antecedent where we are imposing conditions on the integration of properties. Properties, the way I understand them, are what possible semantics says they are. Um, plus we have, we have a temporal factor, so it's, it's a pro an empirical property of an individual is, which is, is non-trivial, it's just a function from worlds to a function from times to a set. This is where I said it's a characteristic function. So I'm not making a plea for for hyper intention for hyper intentionally individual properties here. This is not what I'm This is uh, Ripley. Uh, David Ripley, always good to read. Um, this is taken from a paper where he compares two approaches to fine grading. Circumstantialist, where you have circumstances of evaluation, 
wills, including impossible wills, but when you eschew any sort of structure or structured <coughs> positions that invoke some sort of structured meaning. And he tries to come up directly with a case where, cluster of cases where the structuralist fails to draw distinctions that should be drawn and which the circumstantialist can draw. Be that as it may, I'm not talking about structures versus, versus circumstances in here, um, oh, this is the context. This is an example where we need to draw a distinction. And what I'm going to say is, no, you don't want to draw that distinction. There's another distinction you do want to draw. So, Tama, from Guy, fears that all woodchucks are woodchucks. Which is already very funny if you think about it. Why would you, why would you be afraid of a public ontology? Right? Um, Tama fears that all woodchucks are wizard things. And then he says, this is the wrong prediction. Um, so the wrong theory, the, the coarse grain theory, the, the theory that fails to draw from conversational distinctions, must predict that one or two are either true together or false together. So they're a true condition equivalent. Um, this is the wrong prediction. Suppose time is familiar with both woodchucks and wizard decks. Whatever that means, right? Both familiar with both Fs and Gs. Uh, but this ensures that they are the same kind of trigger. Um, I'll be making a little bit of fuss about this they later on because this is an NF, what does it pick up? They. Uh, he's noticed similarities though, and, he's had, and he has his suspicions. Suppose Phil the Tower knows he's allergic to whistle picks and knows that he's just been thinking about woodchuck. In this scenario, two is likely true, while one is almost certainly false. <coughs> But suppose you play around with this. So um, assume that two is true. But then you infer and then you add, uh, um, the, the premise that um, anything that's a woodchuck is a whistle pig, and whatever's a whistle pig is a woodchuck. Then you infer what? Well, one amounts to fearing that a certain that a certain methodology be true. So, what happens to two? That's got to go two. Because then two is, again, it says nothing other than, other than that Tama is afraid that certain tautology be true. So, what is the distinction that we are being asked to draw? What is the suspicion that Tama has? This passage is one that, that, that is often quoted in, in surveys of, 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 of high contentions. You know. It's a clear case where we obviously need to find rain. I'm not sold on that at all. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean, however, that we should go ahead and say that it's 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 it's, it's fine if if. Um, if uh, what the relatable of fears is, uh, is a possible world proposition, because that's just a necessary proposition. And then we couldn't distinguish between Tama fearing that all woodchucks are woodchucks and Tama fearing that all natural numbers are natural numbers. And that's the distinction we want to draw. So, we agree that two things are happening here. Uh, uh, coarse graining is being compared against fine graining. Uh, you know, good old fashioned possible semantics versus this, that, and the other <coughs> theory of high intentional evaluation. Then the semantic and logical effect of substituting one predicate for the other within, when that predicate is embedded within an attitude description. So the majority view is that there's a, the apparent link between the two, 
is that the effect is such that only a high potential theory will suffice for a problem analysis of one and two. No. The first possible is that what one would naively expect, namely that the simple possible world theory predicts is wrong. The fact is that substitution is invalid rather than that. No. Substitution is absolutely valid in my book. The way I think of it is that F and G, uh, which substitute for is a woodshop, it's a uh, whistle click. Um, I just have notational variants. That's the assumption that they're synonymous. That's what we started with. We're assuming that they're synonymous. So they're just notational variants there, and we have a case of semantic redundancy. We have two different terms that do exactly the same semantic job. One of them is just fat, which we trim. Um, but there's a category of limiting cases that do demand hyperintentional analysis, and that's the thing I just brought up. Suppose f and g are two distinct properties, fearing that, so you, it's one thing to fear that uh, woodpeckers are woodpeckers, another thing is to fear that woodchucks are woodchucks, so a third thing is to fear that natural numbers are natural numbers. Right? Don't we all dread the day when it turns out that natural numbers are natural numbers, right? There's something to fear. Right. So we, we, need, we need to look at the complements here, right? So um, when F and G are distinct properties, we need to go high potential. When the predicates, predicates, right? The terms are notational variants, all right, but are semantically indistinguishable, then we can substitute for G. So this is the uh, the core of what an algorithm. Um, I hope to uh, annoy you too. Right. So this is the, this is scribbling, and then I this is what I suggest we uh, this is the, the, the rewrite I suggest because I want to bring out the confusion between not confusion the the, the blend the le legitimate blend of predicates and properties. So take this here. There's some because there's something apparently that there's some days that we apparently have to um, take seriously. Um, Tama is familiar with both this and that. So apparently he's familiar with two different things. Um, he's noticed the similarities between two different things. Uh, and he has his suspicions that there's some confluence. Um, he apparently he learns something empirical by learning that, that uh, the woodchuck that we tell is, is a whistle pick. Okay, um, so this is what I rewrite. Suppose Tama is familiar with both the word woodchuck and the word whistle pick, but isn't sure that they have the same meaning or denote the same kind of trigger. So, what am I doing here? I'm attributing Linguistic competence to the agent. That's what I'm doing. But no, there's nothing wrong with this taxonomy of rodents. It's this command of English that is uh, formed. He's noticed the similarities between the animals that go by woodchuck and those that go by whistleback. So he's got two files animals that I know as woodchucks and animals I know as whistleback. Uh, so we have the uh, the two nests that we were after, and he has his suspicions. Yes, aha. So those two files, the things are filed under F, the things are filed under G, could be, could be uh, merged. Suppose so the tower now is allergic to the animals called whistlepicks, and knows that he's just been bitten by an animal and it's a woodchuck. That is interesting for him to merge his files. So we have paid this rewrite uh, pays full respect to the data that we brought up here. But this requires a sharp distinction between predicates and properties. And what happens here is basically we're confusing uh, user mention of predicates. 
That's my analysis. Um, so people want to tell people, Beeler, Zolta, just two. Um, what demands presuppose that an attribution of an attitude to a rodent um, pay attention should pay attention to the choice of predicate as well because a particular predicate comes with a particular history history of acquisition for that for the for the attribute I'll agree to that pragmatically. Pragmatically, it can be very infelicitous right, to use one predicate rather than that. He would never say that. He doesn't know that term. So it's, it's misleading. But is it semantically correct? Yes, absolutely. On the assumption of tsunami. Um, so, what is the um, granularity you are after? I think uh, the thing was on the, the right track here, and um, I knew it was coming to Belgium, so I, um, in order to uh, favor color with values, I picked a quotation in one of the three official languages of Belgium. <laughs> um, so, four words for horse. Four words for horse. I think he uh, that's that's the right attitude here. Again, who knows if 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 if, if, if they're if they're synonymous. <laughs> uh, synonymy is, is hard to combine in, in that language within the same language. It's easy if you uh, cut across languages and, and, and pick uh, toponyms, for instance. Um, in, the, in the paper version, I have a, a Vienna, Videni. Uh, Bean, Beach, uh, four different names for the same city. But, um, and there's no redundancy across languages because if you, if you if you call one word, then one of the languages will use will lose their their word their name for the other. Um, so redundancy that's semantic redundancy that's relative to to, to one language. Um, All the fluff goes uh, in the Gedanke, right? That's the project of the Gedanke. And uh, so a lot of things uh, are semantically irrelevant. It's, it's pragmatic, it's, it's, it's rhetoric, it's stylistic variation. I think Fagan uh, picks the, the right calibration here. But this is natural language, so it's a mess. Right, so um, take poetry. I think the, the, the bar comes up in poetry. And uh, some fellow Italians have argued that convincingly, and uh, Ernest Lacour, uh, uh, linguist, uh, 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 has this to say that even if you have sheen and lustre, then they're perfectly synonymous for that intent and purpose, but not with embedded in poetry. Right. So, um, it's not just the, this. This is from uh, the rhyme of the ancient narrative. This is not just about preserving meaning. This is, the poem is about preserving uh, rhythm and flow and uh, imagery. Perhaps um, sheen is more suggestive than uh, lustre is. What I know. So that's also why poetry is, is not it cannot really be translated into a different language. Um, so this is not the case I'm after. I'm okay. Uh, as the more quotidian uh, cases when we talk about rodents. What is the animal that bit the tower? I want a medical report, I don't want poetry. Yeah. So that, that's that's the kind of nation. Um, I'll work towards till now. Um, sparing you the uh, definitions, I'll just present them as we speak. I won't present the definitions, I will. Tell you what the notation means, what it does. We need three uh, levels. So we have the hyperintellectual level, we have the intellectual level, that's what we know from 
of lots of relics, and we have the extension level. Um, the extensions we will talk about today are the ones that we obtain by taking an intention and then extensionalize it, which means go to a particular world at a particular time, we get the extension of that intention and these two empirical indices. So the, uh, all the strawberries in this world at this moment. So, Woodchuck, the subscript here, that's a set of Woodchucks. Woodchuck here is an intention. And this intention has been presented by uh, a hybrid intention. And it works top down. And uh, let me just fill the beans right away. When we are until when we do our, our fine grain bit, we uh, will, for instance, take an example like uh, fortnight versus two weeks. Then you bump up against the uh, paradox of analysis. Do we have suddenly or uh, not? No, they, their canonical structures are different. But we have a notion of procedural isomorphism, which of course sounds like synonymous isomorphism like in church or essential uh, isomorphism as in kernel. And we would be very flattered if we would be seen as being sort of in that whole part. Um, so procedural isomorphism says these two uh, structures are distinct structures. But their structures are semantically here. If F and G are not cases like less than four nine versus less two week, but are cases like is a woodchuck, is a guinea pig, uh, is a whistle pig, where there's no uh, semantic, when there's no syntactic structure that we need to. Work with, they're just atoms, lexemes. If that's what, what we're looking at, um, we don't have to bother about procedural isomorphism when we read out semantically irrelevant differences in structure because it's just one structure, because we're looking at structure, uh, uh, atoms. The structure, uh, so we have a, a second, but, but the st structures which are just a one uh, unit. I'll explain how that works. But that's and that that's exactly why we don't draw distinctions between wood uh, what I call uh, wood wood sharks and individual things. Because there is no up here. Uh, so I might even have written uh, what's it thing? So triple S we have four Depends on the day, uh, but uh, what we need. But but, but the f we have um, we have four key structures. Structures for us are procedures. <clears throat> they uh, line things up, and then they tell you what to do with it. So here is an operation. Here's an operand. Apply this operation to this operand, and that rules an object of this logical type. Which may then be an argument for another operation. So you have this logical flow chart. Um, so it's, it's all a matter about functional application, functional interaction. But these two complex procedures need something to put to work on. So we have two feeder. <clears throat> procedures um, which are atomic. There are variables and what we call generalizations. And variables are not terms. Variables are one step procedures which present, produce an object relative, re relative to uh, the sequence, uh, the total function. The 
counterpart of the miracle is what we call trivialization, and the linguistic counterpart <coughs> would be a constant. But you understand that while well, procedures are not linguistic, they are abstract logical objects. We're trying to make sense. We're trying to make sense of what Frege thought was to say, basically. A trivialization. Uh, I could trivial, trivialize the uh, <coughs> Vendor Nerve. What do you need to do then? <clears throat> I need to assign a type to the Vendor Nerve. This is a fully typed universe. Let's, let it be a, a Yota object, an individual, what one of you would call an E object. If I as a type the Vendor Nerve, as a Yota object, an individual, and I trivialize it with uh, an nerve. What is that procedure? That procedure says, reach, figuratively speaking, reach into the type of all the other objects. That's what we need to type it for. And extract a specific object from that quite huge domain of, of uh, objects in there, namely the uh, nerve. I haven't told you. Anything descriptive about that individual? There's nothing descriptive about trivialization. So I could trivialize uh, um, pi. Right. It would be very unwise to do that because how would you extract pi? Right. But the theory allows that. So you need some philosophical wisdom, discretion with you as to what you trivialize or not. Let's assume we are comfortable. Uh, isolating the property of being a loop. Chuck, let's assume we are comfortable isolating, you know, extracting, uh, identifying uh, the random. Okay. So we can trivialize those. So now we're trivializing property, the property being a whistle pick. And this composition, as it's called, says. Um, that the identity relation obtains between what this trivialization yields, namely this trivialization. And this says, well, the other argument of this relation is uh, what this trivialization uh, produces, namely this trivialization. So I'm saying that the trivialization of this property is identical to the procedure for identifying this property. So I'm saying there's just one procedure, there's just one hyperintention. That's what that means. So this, right at this point, I've cast aside any pretension that I'm going to draw hyperintentional distinctions. There's just one hyperintention. That's, that, that's what that means. Um, so, if I use, uh, if I if I quote this, um, so mention this this trivialization of this property, well, then I have redundancy. Uh, trivialization of woodchuck, the trivialization of whistlepin. That's one to many. An overkill. I don't need two different terms for the same procedure. Um, if I read this here, then what? So we just want to say to them, then I change the type of the identity relation. I'm saying that this is a function that takes two properties to truth value. Truth value is the true one if this property is that property. So this proposition says look at what this conversation generalizes, name this property. Look at this conversation. And I've typed the identity relation such that I'm saying that this property produced such and such is identical to the property produced such and such. Which again is a very uninteresting limited case <laughs> because I have one pr pr procedure producing the same thing. It's just I have, I have, I have two pieces of notation for that this notation and this notation. Now this reflects the fact that I have two terms that are synonymous.
So the first one, uh, how did that go again? Tama fears that all woodchucks are woodchucks. So how, how do you uh, how do you analyze that? Well, what, what, what do you do with the couple? First of all, is it is it predication or is it um, identity? It doesn't matter for our, our purposes. But I'll give you those. This is predication. So um, whenever you see a lambda bound world and time variables, you're probably going to into them. This is explicit inter explicit intentionalization. Um, because we're going to abstract over values of uh, such a, ver a ver a variables and such variables because we have rules of times and scale times. <coughs> this whole thing here is a closure um, functional uh, procedure of functional uh, extraction. This whole thing here, this closure, produces a possible world from session. Um, because it isolates uh, those rules and times, of which it is true that Tama is an element in the population of fearful individuals, um, such that they are related by the fearing relation to, and this is the key thing, this here would relate Tama to a public world proposition. And we'll have an example later on where that is just so. But we don't want it here, right? Because we want to distinguish between fear and the normal woodpeckers and woodpeckers, fear and the woodchucks, woodchucks, and fear and the normal okay. So we need to, so we don't want to relate Tama to a necessary proposition. We want to relate Tama to a procedure that is typed to produce the necessary proposition. Uh, and if we interpret the common as predication, then uh, Thomas' fear is that this generalization produces the hyperproposition that um, is that all objects that are instead of uh, woodshops at the world of time, and any world of time where he has his fear, is such that he has. Is a little bit of this. Yeah, it, 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 it's a silly fear, but well, I mean, that's the example. Um, I read the couple of as I did say, um, and this little thing we can uh, easily reduce to this here. Um, so, Tama fears. The generalization of a truth value. This composition is a truth value. This is time to do a truth value. Uh, we certainly we cannot uh, have a, an attitude towards a truth value, but you can have an attitude towards a procedure whose product is a truth value. So, Tama fears that, in formal terms, Tama fears that this. Uh, Logical hyper proposition um, produces the truth of the true. And he fears that this uh, property is an to this property. Um, and here we need to be hyper intentional, right? I hope, I hope that's clear. We need to be hyper intentional. That's what I'm saying. It is an, it's, the grip is, example is, is a nice misdiagnosis of the reason why we need to go hyper intentional. We need to go hyper intentional, but not for the reason that Ripley states, but for the reason that he doesn't state. Um, this I've already uh, talked about, right? so we, we, we need to distinguish between fearing this, that, and the other thing. Right? That's what we need to go hyper. Um, Tama fears that all numbers are numbers. Um, you can do this in any of three ways. Um, we have a third option because we can introduce, if you like, um, as none, um, letter numbers as a ground type. Well, that, that's nothing to worry about. 
So these are three different ways of making sense of Thomas and fear that all numbers are numbers. And again, we need to, we need to be hyper to go hyper uh, hyper proposition here because if not, Thomas would be related by means of fear to what this realization produces, namely a truth on it, because this is just a uh, this we just very old fashioned model. There are one that are. So the, the, the qualifier takes a, 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 a set to truth. But again, Dama doesn't fear truth. So I made it, I've argued why we need to go hyper. I've shown you how to individuate between the different complements, actually, complements that we need. I also promise that sometimes it's absolutely fine to descend from the hypertensional level to the intentional level, contrary to what Ruby said. Well, this example was intended to show that the prediction made by standard protocols and medics was wrong. Not always. Not always. Um, Tama fears that some root shocks are poisonous. That means that he's afraid that a certain empirical state of affairs should obtain. It doesn't matter how that empirical state of affairs is presented to Tom. In any such case, just relate people to a possible proposition. Which is just a subset of the space. Spice like the times. So again, we this closure produces a, a empirical truth condition, which is satisfied only in world of time where Tama is among those who fear that uh, there's an intersection between woodchucks and poisonous. Beasts or animals. He doesn't care how uh, any set of poisonous animals is presented to him. He doesn't care how this particular road is presented to him. Well, of course, this is the end, and the an attributor who picks. Uh, This predicate for the attribution. And why just as well have picked any other predicate semantically indistinguishable from the predicate woodchuck. Because all we want to do is to name a property. And we're not interested in how that property is presented either straight away by means of a uh, trivialization, reach into the set of all the empirical properties of individuals and extract the property of the woodchuck, or in a roundabout uh, way, um, the way for life is a two period. So fear, of course, is a different type. It's, an, it's a relation in intention between an individual and a possible proposition. <coughs> so again, this is a case where our variants will work this claim. Because there are cases where the, 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 the simple possible uh, theory is just right. It's funny for me to be saying these things because I'm always saying, you know, uh, up there uh, on the road saying the, the, the intentional solution is insufficient and we need to go hyper intentional. And uh, we need to distinguish between um, uh, uh, this cluster of procedural isomorphic uh, um, hyper intentions. But not when we're dealing with synonymy. So, what have I. Let me read this to you. 
I argue the following. Believing that woodchucks are woodchucks is one and the same belief as believing that woodchucks are Mr. Beast. But remember the concept that we had before? Um, however delicately we navigate the belief content. By implication, I'm dismissing any sort of sententialism or inscriptionism. This explains why I'm disqualifying this cluster of alleged data as something that a viable processing logic must accommodate. So, previous data are the right. A distinction that applies to predicates has been misapplied to properties. This drawing a distinction that should not have been drawn. Pairs of, synony pairs of synonyms cannot serve to motivate uh, hybridization distinctions. That's the negative message. But I've also pointed out uh, controversially that believing that woodchucks are woodchucks is not the same belief as believing that natural numbers are natural numbers. So this is, of course, the reason why we need to go hyper. So the belief contents of these two beliefs are co-intentional, uh, being the necessary proposition. But they, are far, but they are a far cry for being co hyper intentional. And co hyper intentionality for us is procedural semantics. Right? The reason for going hyper the reason for going hyper intentional is that two distinct hyper propositions both yield the same proposition. So we have convergence of two different procedures in the same product. That's a nice little triangle, right? Two distinct um, hyper intentions that produce the same outcome, the same result, in this case an empirical condition, a property. The reason for going uh, abroad? Well, the standard statement of the conundrum reduces the wrong pairs of examples. So we shouldn't be comparing woodchuck with whistlepig. We should be comparing groundhog with natural number. Um, for the right sort of pair to motivate hypertensionality. This explains why I've been speaking of a misdiagnosis of a real conundrum. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, questions? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, Joran. So, uh, first, uh, like to say that I'm uh, okay, so I'm also very interested in hypertensionality. So I, I'm always curious about the details of arguments for going hypertensional, and I'm also very curious about the limits of hypertensionality mm -hmm. because usually people that argue for hypertensionality are eager to show that there are hypertensional distinctions, but we don't want to overgenerate hypertensional distinctions. So it's important exactly. to know when we need to be co-intentional co and yes. when we need to be co-hypertensional. Yes. So. So I'm competing with you in terms of motivation and uh, but okay, I will present it as a clarificatory question because I have yes, yes, a clarificatory question because I'm, I'm skeptical about the dealing of short examples. I totally see why you want to go and I, I and I see why you want to go there. But um, okay, so the first clarificatory question. So if you if you take the so you, you disambiguated two ways of the story behind the example by Ripley. And you and I agree that in the, in the, the, the was that was that the rewrite? No, no, the the one where you uh, mentioned the, the use versus uh, mentioned confusion. So reflect provides a bit of context. Exactly, yeah. this is this one. Yeah, and I agree with you that the, the first the story first one is ambiguous, and I agree that the, if I if, if I want to be careful about mentioning use, yes. the second one is the right way to understand. Yes. I think it conveys basically the same information, except that the second one, the, the second one conveys intended information that the, the information that, that the first one intends to convey, except it's more precise. Yeah, that was, okay. that, that was the purpose. Yes. Okay, good. So, so we agree that this is a this is a, a good this is a, a possible context. Okay, and then my question for you is, if we make clear that this is a context we are considering, do you agree with the so? The evaluation of the sentence is natural language. Uh, Tama uh, fears that woodchucks are woodchucks false. 
come up here is that uh, we check our whistle peaks true. Do you agree with that? With that? Uh, with that? Uh, do you say as, no, as a speaker no. of English, you deny that? They. Uh, this is a very simple question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is, it, it, um, well, the implications are perhaps not that simple, but um, <laughs> no, it's 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 one of the same thing that is being phrased in two slightly different ways. Okay, also, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, that's, what, uh, that's what I would expect you to answer. Yes. But the reason why I ask this question in this way is that, um, so one way, one way to phrase it in, in, a, in a slightly more political way, yeah. but it's just like for the sake of Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, So, when you say that your treatment of this example is, I mean, I would see it as revolutionary, Related to like uh, linguistic intuitions, because maybe, perhaps other people can tell me whether I am just like in my world. But I guess what Ripley has in mind, I, I share the intuition that out of the blue, in that kind of context, if someone tells me the story of Tama, yes. and uh, one gave me those two attributions of belief, of fear, and I say yes, but the first one is, is is false in that context, mm -hmm. and the second one is true in that context. That's, I think, what was the reasonable uh, linguistic, as a reasonably competent, not perfectly competent, as a reasonably competent speaker uh, of English. And I know how the, the word fear works. I kind of know how fear attribution works. That's what I want to say. Uh, and uh, if you want to, so if, if someone comes to me and says, no, really the second one should, should, be, uh, should be false too, because that's not. What she really fears, or what he really fears, I know that Tama was the yeah, first name, but whatever. I, I thought of Tamara, yes. Yeah, but yes. It, it seems like a revisionary proposal. I thought that, so it's, a, it's more like a methodological question. It's, so, so I, I, either I don't, I don't you telling me that, that I don't speak English correctly, or you, you, you are providing a semantics for a revised English, not for like a natural English semantics. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not telling English speakers, whether um, they're native or not, uh, to drop redundant <coughs> predicates. Um, what I'm saying is, if these two different predicates are synonymous, is there any semantic difference? Distinction we can draw. No, because that's synonymous. Is there any inferential, or otherwise logical difference we can point to when we use this rather than the other? Predicate? No. Um, and here, and then the rejoinder is: Well, look, it's simply a raw fact that one attribution is right on the money and the other one is not. The one that is off mm -hmm. is that believing that ifs are ifs. Mm -hmm. That doesn't do any justice to Thomas' beliefs. Um, because you're making a mockery of it, as I was very happy to do. But Thomas is afraid of tautology. I thought he was afraid of rodents. No, he was afraid of tautologies. That's the problem. Well, this particular tautology. So that makes a mockery. Whereas the attribution that he fears that Fs are Gs is right on the money, because that is, describes correctly what is going on. That would be the rejoinder. Right? It's simply a raw fact. And, and then I say no, um, given synonymy. Um, fear that SRGs is open to the same mockery. So, what exactly is is become very elusive, right? So, so apparently the choice of of of, of uh, F and G rather than F and F is crucial. And what I say in, in, in the longer paper version is that. 
what always happens is that descriptive material that is not present in the and assembly, because we just look at two different predicates, gets smuggled in such that it can be used in the analysis. And I think if you're talking about methodology, this is where the action is, right? Because um, Chishi would rise from the dead and haunt me in my sleep if I were to do that, where you evoke descriptive material or anything at all in the analysis that wasn't already present in the analysis. So we, we, we do not have an articulated, inarticulated uh, uh, constituents or factors. Yeah? If anything you want to use in the analysis has to be um, um, reported at the, level, at the level of the of the of the understanding. Whereas if, if you belong to the to, to the cab over here who um, use historical not historical historical or causal chains or position theory and all, then in the analysis they would be drawing material that wasn't declared at the level of the other side. We can do that. Um, <coughs> that, that that's why that that, uh, uh, that implication was so, so important, okay? because the, the, the consequence is a necessary condition for identity of properties. Uh, and same thing with the names, right? So the the, the um, uh, so there's a, and then there's the whole thing about opacity and transparency, right? You, you open the Pandora's box. So let's see what's in that box, okay? Because um, this is an attitude context, and this, the center view is that that, that um, terms that are embedded in attitude context. Descriptions of descriptions of attitudes in gender opaque context. So the uh, semantics gets funny. <laughs> so you can sneak in this may be tendential, sneak in factors, descriptive material that would be undeclared in a transparent context. Funny that. Oh, so suddenly there was a presentation involved that would not, that wouldn't have emerged in a different context. Till this um, goes for universal transparency. That, that's also why um, our analysis of um, simple contexts, where we, you don't have any embedding, is more complicated. That's why uh, S versus phosphorus for us is more complicated than simply saying A is B. Um, so if in an opaque context, so-called opaque context, in an actual context, <coughs> you want to, not you yourself, but you know, someone wants to, to distinguish between um, the descriptive material, I'll put it that way, Descriptive material associated with F <coughs> predicative is not entirely identical with the descriptive material that is associated with G. Um, then that has to be explicit also in uh, simple contexts, non embedded contexts. Um, so, the paper version discussed this, but I didn't do that today. It's there's a clash between capacity friendly and transparency fetishistic approaches here. But it boils down to whether or not uh, the analysis can draw on material which isn't explicitly, which isn't explicit for me and a certain Okay, no, I, 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 uh, Thanks a lot for this clarification. So I see why you are drawn to uh, this evaluation of the example. Uh, if I were being like misguided, <laughs> I would say that for, for, so when I when I was doing the issue of methodology, 
I was um, <coughs> I was thinking of uh, uh, the idea that we have like a reasonably clear verdicts. On, we have reasonably clear intuitions on this, and as a semanticist, or as a semanticist, compragmatist, compragmatist, because one, one way to go would be to account for the um, for the intuitions by saying, well, they are not purely semantic intuitions, they are, they, maybe they have a pragmatic component, mm -hmm. I guess. But what we need to do is to account for the data. So this is part of the data. And here we just have to create the context, and for me, it looks like we have clear data, this is true, this is false, or first, first false, like, and so, if you if you come and you say I have this theory which have a certain methodological constraint that they are not an articulated constituents, therefore it has to be false also. Yes. And if I if I have a data first uh, constraint, uh, then the conclusion I draw is well maybe the theory is not adequate or is not expressive enough to yes. capture. Yes. Um, but I mean, yeah. So the, the, because I think that then it's a, it's a it's partly a methodological issue in the sense that we have different priorities, yes, yes, yep. and uh, and then we can agree to disagree because we don't have the same priorities. But that's partly where the the action is, I guess. It, it is, but and, and what is it, if you like aggressive about this this you know, position or my way of acting for it is that I'm being dismissive. Yes, yeah. Quickly, those I think you're you're smarter than me, but these are data. These are not data. I will not build a theory around these data. I dismiss them as data. It's the same thing as with the Krupkins coming along with this necessary history nonsense. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely, totally not. It, these, are, these are not data. They, those are effects belonging to a particular theory. That's what they are. I I didn't argue for that. Yeah, I, no, I, 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 I just, I just yeah, no, I think, I think it's a view. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a legitimate view that we should not take uh, like uh, uh, intuition at face value all the time, like naively. Uh, I mean, by intuitions, I mean like judgments about about cases in the certain So, so I. But I think if if you wanted to convince me yes. in, in this particular case, you would need to to tell me a story. Maybe it's, you're not interested in telling me this story, but at least. You should provide me a story for why it looks like it's okay. Yeah. And uh, and and if you don't provide me this story, I think there's so the part of the semantical your semantical theory is great, it's perfect, and it does or it's supposed to do nothing more, nothing less. But still, it, it would be even better if it could be like articulated to something else, maybe a pragmatic theory, maybe an error theory. I don't know what, but who, who explains yeah. why we feel compelled to that judgment. Because I, I, I assume we all feel compelled to that, that judgment about the second example. No? If we, if we um, buy into the why therapeutic remarks, because yeah. that's what we're asking for. Right? What, what, why is it that we're drawn? Yeah. What, why is it that we feel compelled? Exactly. Like this uh, example. Well, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the story of political sketching is it's use mention confusion. And the, the, the rewrite is supposed to bring that out. And if, if, if that doesn't sell it, I, I, I don't know what would. Um, because I think it's very simply a, a, a clash of methodologies. Basically, a clash between full on fragrance with full transparency versus. Um, Theories where the, there's no sharp distinction between uh, syntax, s semantics, and pragmatics. Um, because that, 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 that could, that, I'm, I'm open to the objection that I'm presupposing a very sharp distinction between the three. <laughs> um, why? And uh, this is natural language, natural language semantics. Uh, isn't that always completely uh, entangled with the pragmatic practice? When you learn the term, how you learn the term, uh, building up a file where you file all F, F, F denoted things, you have a different file over here for all the G denoted things. 
And it didn't occur to me um, to merge these two uh, files. Even if it was just in a way of redundant bookkeeping. If in. Yeah, I think that, that, that's all of you. So, so, so I, would, I, would, I would state my position. This, this, is, this is our take on it. Um, it works um, on its own premises. Um, Yeah, I, th I think also the tricky with the, tr the tricky bit is also uh, the, the the very assumption of, of synonymy within natural language because the, the, are there ever such cases? Perhaps right. uh, if there, I could I could still build up a framework that evolves synonymy of natural language predicates. It's just that we would never have any data to work on. Yeah, so that would be a future exercise, right? But but, um, but but there are these clusters that do come up, Cougar and, and, and Puma, and, and um, and what what I, what I see is that, that that they're often used to motivate the introduction of hybrid intentional distinctions. And in this case, they're going to be very fine grained because there's not no syntactic, uh, there's no difference in syntactic structure to that complaint. Uh, uh, I'm fine with the paragraph analysis. That, that that's that's real stuff. Um, but lexemes, what what's the what's the what's the semantic difference? Okay. Well, thanks a lot. This is no, a very good position. This is very clear. So, uh, if I may just like ask a, a small kind of clarification by this point, and then I have an answer. So, basically, so that your your response to the uh, so for someone who is really data driven and who say, I have a clear intuition about the second sentence. Yes. So you say, well, the second sentence is the the F, where is F and G? Yes. Yeah. So basically, you you deny that the field attribution is true. But you say, well, there's a similar fair attribution that would need to be phrased metalinguistically. So she fears. You need to treat her. So you deny the, the fair attribution. Like she, uh, he fears that S equals uh, G, or all S are G. Because that's again just fearing an uh, Yeah, yeah. So you, you say it. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. But I think to, to, to say something to people who, who like it, Intuitions and they just you should say, but actually there is a there is a very close free attribution, which is a metalinguistic, which is she fears that uh, whatever is denoted by uh, f is denoted by by f is denoted by g, mm -hmm. and then you say this one is true. Absolutely. Yeah, and so the the reason why we feel compelled to uh, accept the, uh, is because we make a confusion. Yes. And in natural language, we are like sloppy by user mention. So that's yes. basically your story. Yes. So it's meaningful. So, it, so, so, so you answer to the guys who say, well, I have to be very generic. Say, no, I'm not that very generic. I just need to, to disambiguate the example to. Uh, okay. So, and I think this is a. Okay, now I have a more friendly to that, that view, to that, to that way of presenting actually the argument. I think it's uh, more powerful towards that. Okay. Thank you. And it's also, uh, I offer also the, 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 um, the data here are the dictum. Mm -hmm. But we can, suppose we, 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 can, we use a, a direct convention. Um, wood chucks are such that Tama fears that they are poisonous. That's a different example. It, 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 it is, but what, why is it? It's, 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 it's because. Um, the, the 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 way of denoting this property is outside Thomas horizon. Mm. Right. Um, if there was a, a a synthetic compound that was that was at least by means of Analysis again by four and two and two weeks 
related to, 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 to woodchuck, then I think we would also be free to use that compound. Um, Fortnites are such that Tamil fears that they last forever. Periods of two weeks are such that Tamil fears that they last forever. Fine. Um, although until we could also uh, do uh, hyper, -prop hyper proposition I think she's direct um, where we still need to be delicate but 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 but, but the royal, but the raw intuition is here right so so um, so why, why exactly uh, would any intuition that is in favor of Brickness example for flat when we turn to formulations the array. Simply because any distinction between these two predicates would be immaterial. And so that, that should also give pause to someone who's sold on on, on, on this example. Thanks. I mean, I have something to reflect. I, uh, I, I don't want to, uh, to monopolize it. How about there are questions? Any sort of discomfort or any lingering um, thoughts or in, anything to do with chill as well as this? No, yes. Um, Transparency, for instance. Yeah. No, but I'm not suspicious, but I have a. Could you return to one of your first slides when you saw the, the assumption of the of the general view, the the, the dark side? Okay, so the majority view. Yes. And so I, I I really understood why you defend the minority view and you show semantic, etc. But I didn't see well, except you said it's garbage. It's, it's bad data. It's a, why the majority view, this this way to formalize it, is fundamentally wrong. Now, of course, when I, I adopt your point of view, I say, okay, but do you have some independent uh, uh, argument? I'm, I'm making a very strong claim right? that this is inconsistent. Yeah, so yeah. inconsistent in what sense? It, that, um, that if you make this attribution, with this assumption here, you're you, you cannot go go on to uh, uh, negate this here because then this here, this whole thing here is just a negation of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but these are attitudes. Are you talking about properties? Are you talking about predicates? Or in this no, no, one, no, 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 no. Um, if if you if you if you're essentialists. Scriptures, then, uh, then this is this is this is fine. This is, mm -hmm. this is fine. Um, my objection only works if, if you're not a sententionist. Okay. But Ruby is also not a does, doesn't come from, from sententionist right, at all. Um, so it, it's not the predicate that matters uh, for him. You know, the, 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 the choice of this term rather than that term. Um, it's it's what sort of clings to to this term, but not to that term. And what exactly is that? Mm -hmm. right? And, and uh, well, these historical or causal theories, then theories of acquisition, have sort of well. I acquire this predicate under these circumstances. That's what I would try to me. Apply this. Acquire this other predicate in these other circumstances, and that's what I wish the biggest thing. And I haven't worked my files. I have my suspicions, and, but um, I haven't done it yet. Right? So it's enlightening for me to be told that the woodchuck, because that's how I would phrase it, the bit me is, is, is a whistle thing. And I know the whistle picks, the things I, I know as whistle picks are poisonous. A bit of inference, ah, okay. I have a problem. I need to see a doctor. Mm -hmm. This is also how well, Jacob is, is also picks up on this example as well. And he's, uh, one of his many people books. And he says, well, uh, Tama uh, learns something. And 
Um, um, if in the case of FF uh, is not motivated to see an doctor, in the case of FG, he is motivated to see an doctor. Mm -hmm. So those are data. These are put forward as data that we need to build a theory around. And I, um, I have a, just a, a, a curb footnote where I say no. <laughs> um, the way Jago puts it, there are no data to, to accommodate. There is, uh, because he, he's free, there's something going on. There is something that we can learn. But it's phrased uh, incorrectly. What we can learn is nothing to do with the taxonomy, nothing to do with robots, but about language. So, um, my claim is that Tama is linguistically incompetent. That's his predicament. Sorry, competent or in in incompetent? Incompetent because there is a pair synonym of synonyms that he uh, hasn't internalized. Yeah, that's again what you said. And that's, that's the part. Saying. That the part. Of yeah, the, I, 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 I think that, 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 it's the same thing. That you there, I, I said yes. So based, so I'm not being circular here. Um, the common ground is that F and G are synonyms. Mm -hmm. Because if, if not, you know, there's nothing to discuss. Right? So the synonyms. What are the implications of that? Um, Yes. No, so the story, maybe I'm not a philosopher of language, but the story is that these are synonyms. And we we assume that Tamal Tara, 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 Tara learned something. Yes. Learned something. So, yes. so it's so not just is confused and suddenly has some flash. Learn something. So yes. new information that is yes. efficient in a certain sense. Yes. And you're saying that he or she, I don't know, Tama, <laughs> Tama, yes. Tama learned that he or she was confused about distinguished as farms. So it's a semantic thing that she learned. Yes. And it seems that the majority view it's something a little bit different than, than he or she learned. It, the way, I see, the way I see it, Tama does learn something, which is that um, this predicate, that predicate, are synonyms. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. It's uh, if, 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 if you compare two languages, no mean within the same language, if you take two, lang two different languages and uh, the name for the capital of Vienna, mm -hmm. that is also inviting to be. Told that well, the, the Czech name for Vienna is Vídeň, and the Hungarian name for Vienna is Beč, uh, and the Italian name is Vienna. That's very likely. That that doesn't tell me anything about Vienna. It tells me something about Italian and uh, and uh, Czech and Hungarian. That's what he learns. Nothing to do with the taxonomy of Roman to missing. Um, let me go back to Kripke again, um, and I, I speak with a fair of the of the of the of the um, of, 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 of the forum. I used to be a Kripke, uh, and now I'm not. Um, it's supposed to be an empirical insight that uh, empirical insight. Right? No, just a piece of language. Empirical insight. That Boris Johnson is Alexander the It's supposed to be a, a piece of empirical knowledge that you internalize. Boris Johnson is who? Alexander the Professor. That we heard from the oh, no. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 so that is very uh, precious. Right? So, so you, you know how the Thank you. Uh, no, it, it's, it's fine. So, 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 um, so, uh, 
This is the one that the Christians are, are mapping on. Mm -hmm. um, so, Boris Johnson identity, right? Self identity, I mean, this is. Um, For jokes, that's how he's known when he's uh, talking to the Daily Mail, and the example of the is when he's talking to his uh, rich friends. What? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the explanation of Alexander. The Pfeffel, that's, that's, that's his actual. That's, I mean, he, the whole ship, this is the whole ship name, but for jokes, it is, is the, word, the, name, the word name he uses in public, which is fine, it's just an extraction. A fragment of his full name and the sound of the It wouldn't go down well with the Daily Mail, right? Um, but, but, but he's not known in, in private as the Boris. Do you the really have that name, or you're just naming it? No, 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 this is true. Okay, interesting. <laughs> so we learned, we learned these, these things that we didn't know. Yeah, yeah but what is it that we learned? Well, mm -hmm. Because this, this is, I, there are no codes here. Like, yeah, so, exactly. so this, so all to me, all this says is that this individual is identical to this individual. What is the individual who could possibly be identical to Boris Johnson? Boris Johnson, or no one, ever name or not. So this here is just the this triviality, and we don't have a problem with the with the, with boxing that one. Yeah? So, um, so th this is this is a total triviality because again, this is a necessary. This necessity is a necessary. Um, the necessitation of this identity is a necessary condition for this to be true. So, when will this be true? Right. There's nothing empirical about this. That's that's our take in, 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 in uh, briefly. So. But Kripkins and that not think, well, I, I, I learned this name under these conditions, I learned this other name under these other conditions. So it's enlightening for me to be told, to be told this here, without quotes. Without quotes. Mm -hmm. Whereas again, my rewrite would be, ah, I have learned that this proper name, this other proper name, coded out. In fact, there's I'm happy to call them synonymous. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's just the uh, trivialize this, trivialize that. Fine. Um, but then, any funny stuff about time of fear and this but not that goes by the board. There's no room for that. And this, this is how I want it. So now I see better what is the. What is the what is the incompetence that you were referring yes. to? Yes, so my incompetence, everybody's incompetence here, my not to reason was that, oh, and there's this second name. Mm -hmm. Do you have any question? No. Sir? Yeah. Anything at all, you shoot. No, it's okay. And I have one thing, I, so I, I, I'm actually quite convinced that what you, the point you're making, even though um, I mean, there is some it's natural language, there is some pragmatically yes. phenomena that you should like disambiguate and the fear attribution is perfectly fine. It's just like not very accurately phrased and, and then in usual circumstances we will like auto-correct it uh, by pragmatic measures and get actually the right reading, the one you're... Um, the, one, the one that you re, uh, where it's about language. Uh, so, so I, I, I'm, I'm, so I would not say that 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 Tama fears that uh, uh, ground dogs or uh, ground dogs or, or whistle pigs is in itself false or like absurd uh, uh, thing like the the thing with ground dogs or ground dogs, no. but that it's uh, I mean it has to be disambiguated and sometimes. Uh, if you correctly disambiguate the context, then you will actually find that this is a purely, a perfectly right intuition to have. But that was not my, I mean, uh, that was not my question. That no, no, and, and, that, and that is not what Ripley says. 
No, 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 no. I'm not. Okay, okay. So I, I, feel, I think I'm on your side. Uh, just that I would be a bit more tolerant for the data. As, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> I accept the data, but I think there's a pragmatic thing to be said for it. Yes. That was not my question at all. What, what I was a bit troubled by um, is the distinction. You mentioned two kinds of uh, fear attribute attribution. Uh, the other one was uh, ground hooks or poisonous. Uh, yes. Uh, he fears that ground hooks are poisonous, and there it should be a different sort of. Uh, and and I don't. I mean, you should. I don't see why this would be purely intentional. Um, I mean, it, it does, to it, some it, extent, everything is poisonous. Uh, yes. it, it, but my, my claim is not that, that it must be like this. I'm, I'm saying there, there, there is room for this. Mm. There's room for this coarser analysis. There isn't room for coarser analysis when it comes to the fearing that the that But fearing, fearing this, that there's an intersection between this and that. Um, we, we could find grain, but well, that would be, we, we could find grain, right? Uh, but it, but it would be theoretical overkill because there's there's nothing to be gained from it. If if the way to understand Tawas' fear is that she's afraid that he sorry, is afraid that a certain state of affairs that, that, that he finds himself in a certain in a world which is in a particular way. And I don't, he doesn't care how that, uh, how that empirical set of affairs is, has been generated or is, is presented. But it seems to me that in this example he might do, because, like, as I said, uh, most things are poisonous to some extent, like very likely so. Yes. And the fact that the woodchuck is, is an animal, uh, I don't know, it seems like the, 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 the mode of presentation plays a role if you really want to make sense of such sentences. Um, like, water is poisonous, uh, it doesn't mean, I mean, like scientists say such things to shock uh, normal people. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean the same thing. It doesn't just mean like there's a poisonous objects and uh, and water objects and there, there is an intersection between or something like that. Uh, or it's, it's a subset, one of subset of the other. It seems to be something much more rich. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and that seems to be that is lost. Yeah. That is lost. So so. Um, um, this, this analysis is offered for um, argumentative and methodological reasons, and then to show that, that there's room, uh, as opposed to not at all. There's room for this analysis. It doesn't make a fool of, of Tama, um, like fear of ontology or fear that the necessary proposition is true. So it doesn't mean that doesn't mean that that, that it's it's superior to a, a, a fine grained mm. description. Uh, none of the neons that we might detect here is lost down here. Mm -hmm. Some of the things you'll just just stipulated towards. Yes, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you if you want to so if you detect those neurologists in this understanding, you have to be careful to the analysis. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Which means I must go hyper intentional in my, in my analysis here. Mm -hmm. um, and that it might well be that um become the story. Yeah, but so this is this is crude. <coughs> this, is, this is just a set of affairs. It, However, it's presented. Um, um, because fear depends on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, you don't fear some poison, you do fear some other, but it's. Yeah, yeah I, I, get, I get your point, yes, yes. Um, 
just to keep it short, um, this too shows that, that there is room for that analysis as, as opposed to that. And that happens to hold okay. more. So it's, 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 it's contra uh, uh the, the reputation, right? Where it says there's no room for it. Yeah. Okay. No, there is room for it. Yeah. It's just, um, I mean, I'm curious about this kind of case, which may or may not be a counterexample to your view, I stated in the first slide. So think of, because you individuate properties intentionally. Yes. And if you are generous about what properties there are, you might accept that there is a property of being F, and there is a property of being F or being F and J. Absolutely. And those are co-intentional properties. They are true, they, they hold it exactly the same individuals and also yes. and, and because but then one property mentions like uh, so to speak has a component, has G as a component. Yes. So they are syntactically distinct, which is different from the Wichuk uh, yes. 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 Uh, and so I so but when you put them in when you uh, embed them in, in attitudes. I suppose people like replay with, with, with evaluate them and miss spontaneously will probably evaluate them differently. So if I say that yes. I believe that uh, everything is F, yes. uh, or that this thing is F, and or I believe that this thing is F or it's F and J, maybe I don't have any views about J, I don't know what they are, or I've yes. taken views about them. So I could have the first belief and not the second. It seems like reasonable to me. Yes. And uh, and this is a I think it's a yes. it's a, it's a case that so it's not exactly no but I know exactly exactly, yeah. exactly what you mean and and to keep it short take it from me we can, we can easily come with that okay because because then that that's just a, a, an excellent reason for going higher okay uh, I I um, so here's this hyper intelligent presentation of this property here's another different. I don't have a presentation of the same problems. Okay. Um, oh, here's another one for you. Um, play along. Uh, just a yes to the following question. Do you believe that anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger? Uh, no, I don't think that's it. Okay. <laughs> We will discharge that assumption later, but <laughs> humor me, please say yes. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just be niche for a second. Right? Okay. Do you believe that uh, whatever doesn't make you stronger kills you? Uh, no. So you just drew a hyperintelligent distinction. Which, by the way, is also a way to, if you cut your post, to, yeah, to, yeah. to show why, why Nietzsche's claim is, is silly. Okay. Yeah. Um, or, or this, and, and, uh, if, if everything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger, so if something doesn't make you stronger, it kills you. That's a contract. That's a contract. With that, I mean, if you're an illusionist, you might disagree with that. Of course, <laughs> of course. Yes. Or, or another one that comes. Any other <laughs> logics? Uh, they are also. Yeah, you know, just 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 to wrap things up. The, the, here's here's um, one that always throws students uh, uh, completely off when, when we do um, semantic derivation. Um, so you have um, social alpha. Proposition variable. Um, and I always take a bet, right? So you know how to, how to prove things by means of, of, of mm. matrices. Um, is this true? <laughs> Let's do it. Um, so um, Farolli has the, used this in a, a, a paper. Right? Um, um, it's you're obliged to drive a wounded person to the hospital. Uh, ah, so you, so either you are obliged to drive 
the wooden personal testimony, or you're obliged to uh, grant the wooden personal testimony and be drunk. Why drunk? Well, so, um, so some examples for for you to, to go either the uh, um, I, your point is both about the properties it will take, but that is not an argument for going for hybrid properties. It's um, it's an argument for going for hyper propositions, uh, but but this is this is very easy for us if, if you have a structured approach <clears throat> because then um, there are two different structures. One is more involved than the other. Okay, can you go back please to the, the first statement of the <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Which one should the very first with the minority view and the majority view? Uh, yes. Uh, so if you are intentionalist about um, uh, properties, <coughs> when entitled to put the equal sign uh, between the uh, examples that you yes or anywhere, I mean, I, I would take the counter example as a counter example for the minority. So if you have a, a F, and on the other side you have, you think that exactly the same structure you have here, so F or uh, F and G, you, you are entitled to put equal sign because it's intentionally individuated, like structure doesn't matter to the identity. But still, I, 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 the example, it seems like if you take the example of the students, they, they believe the first one, but they don't believe the other. So it looks like it's a counter example to the way the, the, major, the minority view is stated like that with those equal signs. But I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that in, in by the team can deal with that. It's just a point about perhaps this way of phrasing the minority view. Yeah. Perhaps it, not it, it, it's 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 <coughs> and, and I'm, I'm not. Um, this is using very very simple yes. notation for it because any, anything to do because um, these are the, uh, mm -hmm. these, these are not. And no. No. It's my. It, it, it's it's. Um, It's an approximation okay. because this, this is not the uh, final answer at all. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. It's a, it's a question about the clarification question. I, I didn't really get why there is a distinction between saying that, um, or believing that uh, good checks are good checks and uh, all natural numbers are natural numbers. And I was, I was thinking about the. So, the, the, the situation is we are trying to, to see what our town must be Yes. Um, and we could have in the meta language, if you make this distinction between user and mention, we could have in the meta language the same word for uh, wood chunks and whistle peaks, because for us in the meta language we know they are the same. So we, when we describe what she's believing, uh, it's something like she's trying to, uh, he's trying to. Uh, discovered uh, whether A's are A's, because that's our only term for these animals. Although he has to. However, we could also have the same, we could have, we could consider another more simplified meta language in which uh, all tautologies have the name tautology. Yes. And then, in that case, could we say something similar as uh, she's trying to discover? A tautology. This is exactly the same as any other tautology. So uh, it's just about uh, this distinction between um, it's called different tautologies. I, really um, I mean, in, 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 a, in, a, in a simple logic, in, in, in what we teach students, there's just one tautology. It, it's just, it's just. Uh, Phrased in many different ways. Um, um, but that logic would be too primitive to, to draw the distinctions which, which I think should be drawn. Um, 
because there is a difference in subject matter. I think this is the card on the play. There is a division in subject matter between numbers and robots. And that distinction is lost uh, if there's just one tautology. Uh, and where any, <coughs> any fi finesse has been relegated to, 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 to the attic, <laughs> to, to the middle language. Um, because we're not analyzing the meta anything from the middle language in the public language, which is what I'm doing on the mid object linguistic level at all times. Um, I think the, if I got to write, I think the situation you're describing is 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 trying to take elementary predicate logic and uh, its monotheoretic version and try to do uh, attitude logic on this. Um, and, and, and there it would be there it would be fine to say uh, uh, A believes a necessary falsehood. Um, it's just there, there, um, there's just one. Right? So, so believing something intuitively speaking, I'm invoking something maybe, something intuitively speaking, simple or something. Complicated. That that would be just uh, reduced to, to this uniform analysis. And then the uh, way to, to, to restore some finesse would be to say, yeah, in, in, in the meta language, we 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 are saying um, uh, chucks are wood chucks, uh, or we are saying that and that's something very complicated and mathematical. Five people can understand. But this is basically a sort of sneaking intentions in through the back door. <coughs> because how did A arrive at Falsum via this thing here, uh, where we have the total of food trucks, and then this very complicated method of uh, Statement over here. Okay. Um, it, 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 again, if we have taught right, to, to the, the, the unique tautology, right, which is a necessary proposition, mm -hmm. proposition talk, well, this, this one can be denoted in endlessly many ways. Yeah. So that's sensationalism again. Right? Um, which was very popular um, for just hmm. kind of was flirting with it and um, Montague was flirting with it uh, Stolling has been flirting with it um, I think it's remained a fruit, <laughs> right? It's 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 it, it. because you, you get to draw tons of distinctions that that you shouldn't draw because you have a sort of accidental use of this term rather than that term. Um, people may not know the, the, the notation, but that does does that affect what they believe? <coughs> they might not know the language. Uh, it gets it gets fairly delicate. Um, but just to be clear, all what I've been saying today is, is applies only to non quotational contexts. And as soon as you throw in anything quotational or, or, or mixed quotation reports, right, um, then all bets are, all bets are off. Um, uh, Tamaka figures that woodchucks are poisonous. Okay, so we have to. Um, so in, in those examples, we were using the terms as in the meta language, as we're reporting what's, what he's believing, yes. independently of how he uses the words. Yes, because words. yes, because it, 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 the perspective is the choice of words is a tribute not a tributee's responsibility. 
um, and the attributor is being absolutely fair as long as the the non-linguistic perspective is preserved. Um, so Tama believes that seven plus five makes twelve is not the same as Tama <coughs> that five plus seven makes twelve, for instance. Um, Tama always blocks when he needs to process the sum of two numbers where the first one is larger than the second one. Just blocks, can't do it. But, um, and it's presupposed that um, the sequence between the two numbers is carried through to the, to the, to the logic, logical analysis. So it's, 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 it's all a pair. First seven, then five, not? Because that's a different pair from first five, then seven. Um, 